Okay, last episode didn't go to plan, but I'm sure we could put things right in this one. Welcome back to episode 3 of Attempting Not To Get Sacked, and 3 is the magic number, and I'm sure I've got something up my sleeve, because we take on Nottingham Forest away from home, and uh, I'm sure there's a few tricks and stuff that I can do. I, I don't know why I've written this intro, it's, I've, I feel like I'm forcing it, you know, I, I really should just go back to the old style, where I just talk about shit. In the last episode, we took on Norwich City away from home and got trounced by three goals to nil. Uh, one of my former clubs in attempting not to get sacked. So uh, they probably got their revenge for last season when I fucked them up. But the results recently haven't been, you know, awful. Like we are unbeaten in some sort of way. I, I mean, I'll explain it in a minute. Now, following that game against Norwich City, we took on league leaders Watford at home. And well, I mean, we looked pretty solid for the first half, but then we conceded in the second as James Garner fired in from 25 yards past Ryan Allsop. I can't really blame the goalkeeper for that. But we did manage to get a penalty later on in the second half. And Joe Jacobson, once again, reliable to fire at home and secure us a priceless point. Uh, we followed that game up with a home game against Sheffield Wednesday and Callum Patterson scored this a great strike pass Ryan also I mean I've conceded two worldies here uh, but then in the second half, we managed to cross the ball into the box and Ig Piazu scored his fourth goal of the season and uh, secured us another 1-1 draw. And we followed that up with a 0-0 draw away at Birmingham City, which leads us into our game against Nottingham Forest away, a team that aren't doing that well. Uh, they've signed another 16 players over the summer. I mean, we should really be battering them. Ryan Tafazoli also made his debut in the last match against Norwich. And uh, I sent him on, even though he's a centre-back, in the 72nd minute when we already had lost the game and we'd already conceded three. I mean, it seems a bit rudimentary to have sent on a centre-back when you've already lost the game. And if you're thinking, Proudy, I literally don't know what you're doing. I mean, try being me. I literally don't know what I'm doing. You remember that time when Louis van Gaal sent on Nick Powell, a player he hadn't played all season in a crucial Champions League game he had to win in order to get through to the next round and they ended up losing? I feel like the substitution I made is on par with that. The board are also very pleased with how we're playing at the moment and they've given me a grade B, which is probably the highest grade I've had in about 12 years. The financial situation at the club isn't very good either. I mean, we've got 475,000 in the bank. And also, if I start struggling anytime soon, I am in deep trouble because I can't bring in any quality players. I mean, you won't see any foreign players turning up at Wickham anyway, would you? They probably think it's some sort of disease. Chris Hewton was also very complimentary about my style of football at the club and how well I'm doing at Wickham. And I mean, he hasn't actually seen us play yet because my style of football is actually dog shit. Like, I know in the second episode, I was talking about, you know, the short passing football I've brought to Wickham. You know, I try to get rid of the long ball tactics. Yeah, I've just reverted to Route 1 football because it seems to be working. I might as well be playing Route 1 football because every striker I seem to have seems to be perfect for a time target man role. Even that Daniel Nalondalu who I signed from Southampton on loan thinking he wasn't a target man is actually a very good target man. One of my new favourite features this year in Football Manager is the tactical meeting that you can have before matches where your staff members can tell you like what they see not in the forest are going to set up as how we think we should counter them and stuff like that. And then I can just take all their advice in and disregard it and choose the team how I want them to play. And when you're a football manager you have to make the big decisions and in this case the big decision is disregarding all of my staff's tactical advice because clearly I know better than them because I'm in charge. I mean, look at me being all confident, you know, 13th in the league, Wickham are staying up this year, and I'm saying that I clearly know better than everyone else in this game. Now, we move into our game against Nottingham Forest away from home, and I have changed the side around a bit since the last episode against Norwich, and the big change is that Adebayo Akinfenwa starts up front in place of Uche Ikpiazu, who is our top goal scorer this season. Uh, the decision behind that is that I just need to give Akinfenwa minutes, really. Uh, we do have David Stockdale in goal, replacing Ryan Allsop, because Stockdale kept the clean sheet against Birmingham, and I might as well keep him in the side. Jason McCarthy has also returned from injury to take his place at right back in place of Jack Grimmer. Fred Oyedima also starts on the right hand side in place of David Wheeler and I found out that Adeniran who I played as a number 10 in the first episode is actually a defensive midfielder and that's actually my fault. So I've now put him in his right position and we're setting up in a 4-3-3 formation. Clearly I don't know my players very well. Now before we went into the game against Nottingham Forest I went to go and check how the players reacted to the team instructions that I had set out for the game and Uche Egpiazu said that the team instruction play for set pieces doesn't suit his free kicks. I mean, I'm not sure he's going to take a free kick when he's on the bench. And also, he's not even my free kick take anyway. No wonder I dropped him for no reason at all. And if you look at the squad, you can clearly see what team has too much quality to be left in the championship and which team is not in the forest. The team talk also went well for once and I basically said to the team, just go out and enjoy yourselves. You know, it is a difficult game. We are playing a difficult team. I do have Akin Fenwa with his five pace up front. I mean, what on earth is he going to do? And why am I questioning my own tactical masterclass? It was clearly my decision to drop my 
our top goal scorer this season for a player who hasn't scored at all yet. I've also just realized that Nottingham Forest are just outside the playoffs as well. So a big win here could actually see us go above them in the league. And it's amazing that I'm overachieving so much. I'm just going to make the most of it at the moment. We did get our first chance of the game after seven minutes and Nottingham Forest gave the ball away or Patterson intercepted it very well. And some good link up play between Onya Dima and Akinfenwa. So Akinfenwa hit a shot which didn't really trouble the keeper and we got a corner out of it. I mean, why is Akinfenwa trying to shoot for 25 yards? It's clearly not going to go in. A couple of minutes later, Nottingham Forest got their first chance of the game as Cyrus Christie's cross found Anthony Nocke at the back post, but his header went straight at David Stockdale. Easy. Easy. Never troubling the keeper, that. And within the next 30 seconds, we somehow managed to give the ball away and Nottingham Forest had another shot on goal, but Cyrus Christie's shot was saved by Stockdale. And the chances kept coming for Nottingham Forest, and this time Cyrus Christie found Joe Lolly, and after some good play down the right-hand side, his cross found Lewis Graben, and he headed it straight at Stockdale again. I mean, I feel like we're just waiting for Nottingham Forest to score here. We've had one pot shot, which was saved by the keeper, and that's it. That's all we've had so far. But only a minute later, a wayward cross by Joe Jacobson seemed to frighten the Nottingham Forest defence, and Jason McCarthy's interception found Fred, who then laid it off for Akin Fenwood to fire it into the back of the net from the edge of the box. I didn't think he would score. I'm not going to lie. I did not think he would score against Nottingham Forest, and here we are, his first goal of the season. And that's another achievement on this series. I've got Akin Fenwood to score a goal in the championship at 30. 30 bloody eight. But they always say the most dangerous lead is a 1-0 lead and that so proved to be as Joe Worrell then headed in uh, from a corner and gave Nottingham Forest a probably deserved equaliser on the basis of the game. Although to be fair, I think I missed the goal because I was still in shock that Akin Fenwa actually scored. And for the third game in a row, we managed to go in not drawing 0-0 at half time. I mean, times are changing. Like, I'm winning games with Wickham, Akin Fenwa scored in the championship, anything's possible this year. And after telling the boys at halftime, I think we can improve here. Another miracle happened, as Darius Charles hit an ambitious ball forward, somehow the Nottingham defence couldn't deal with it, and then Akin Fenwa slotted it home. Two goals! Two bloody goals! <laughs> I mean, I'm dancing with him at the moment. I mean, you can't see me dance with him because I would get banned for inappropriate content. But that goal from Akin Filmo seemed to have woken up Nottingham Forest because they started to pile on the chances and pile on the pressure on us. And Gaetan Bong managed to get some space into the box after we failed to clear from a free kick. And he then hit the bar. Nottingham Forest got another chance a few minutes later and Gaetan Bong found a Joe Lolly in the box and his cross found Sam Basso, but it could only find David Stockdale's hands. And Sam Basso would have another chance a couple minutes later as Anthony Knockhead laid him off, but then he fired it straight at David Stockdale again. I mean, I feel like we could win this now. When you have a goalkeeper who's in great form like Stockdale is at the moment, anything is possible. With Daryl Horgan about to collapse due to pure exhaustion, I decided to take him off and bring on Daniel Nalundalu, our loan signing from Southampton, who I've actually just found out is a better attacking left midfielder than he is a striker which I brought him in for. And with Nottingham Forest piling on the chances, I decided to send on some fresh legs in midfield. So Curtis Thompson went into defensive midfield and David Wheeler came on for Fred on the right-hand side. And Nottingham Forest was still getting more chances as I changed to a defensive mentality. And Joe Lolly managed to get space into the box, but Josh Knight managed to get a block on the shot and then clear the ball. I mean, we are holding on for dear life here. And unfortunately, with 10 minutes left on the clock, the constant pressure that Nottingham Forest were putting us under finally paid off as Anthony Knockett found some space on the edge of the box and fired it past Stockdale. I mean, it's really heartbreaking that we had held on for so long and that happens. Held on. I got you. I got you, brother. Oh, no, you don't. I also got some great news in injury time as David Wheeler picked up an injury and that meant that he couldn't play any further and I had no substitutes on the bench left. And thankfully, we managed to hold on to a 2-2 draw away at the city ground. Another draw. That's four draws in a row now. Four draws, Proudy. Four. That's insane. And just to round off this episode, Akin Fenwa even got man of the match for his two-goal display. I can probably guarantee those are the only two goals he's going to score this season. Man.